numbers and we want you to jot those down as quickly as you can because we're interested in hearing from you, especially if you're someone who is in real need, spiritual need, you need some guidance, you need some information, you need help with maybe instructing someone else that's not listening to what you're saying in regard to something that you found associated with our program. Here's our phone numbers. Mine is 276-806-2150. I'm Johnny. Caleb's phone number is 276-806-3641. And Micah's is 434-429-5221. We'll go back to those as we move along in the show tonight. And we want to make sure that you recognize that these are uh, cell phone numbers. You can get in touch with us anytime at these cell phone numbers. That's why we have them up there. Uh, we don't want you to use those lightly. We have a lot of people that call us and they use a little bit lightly, I might say. And we want to make sure that you really have something that is important, especially if you call, call us after 10 o'clock. And so we're not saying don't call us the, after 10 o'clock, but let's be realistic. You know, we have lives and we're at the point of really getting a lot of calls and, and a lot of contacts. And so I'm going to have to move around a little bit because I want to be able to see that sign. That sign says Fairview Baptist Church. Now, I want you to notice that this is not um, something from paintbrush or some visual that we've created. Two buildings right beside each other to compare each other. Those are literally two buildings. This is Fairview Baptist Church. This uh, red building, the brick building, is Fairview Baptist Church from when I visited down there in 2007. The other one is Fairview Church building that has been erected in the last couple of years. And... It's, you know, it, it is the result of Larry Robertson. Now, when I went down there in 2007, Larry Robertson was just elder Larry Robertson. In his own mind, he was just elder. And all of a sudden now, he has turned into Bishop Larry Robertson. And so things have changed. And that's what I want to talk about today on our television broadcast is we want to look at some things that take place right in front of us that... I think is a bit amazing, really, when you get down to it, that individuals are allowing certain things to take place. And you might say, well, Johnny, what business is it of yours? Well, that's how I'd like to start tonight. I'd like to start with a, uh, the fact that people make it our business. They try to encourage us to participate in their problems, and that's, what, that's quite all right. We're very happy to, to, to try to help individuals, especially when they are having trouble. So... I'm going to let you see a video that we put up on Facebook this afternoon and let you see why it is that we're involved with this church. Take a listen. Okay, Kevin's giving me some feedback that he can't hear that. So, on one of the other. Okay. Okay, so that um, kind of gives you an idea of why we're using the the clip that we're using tonight. We're actually trying to set up that people have asked us to be involved with the Fairview Baptist Church 
Fairview Baptist Church is a church that is being run by a gentleman named Larry Robertson. You heard there, that was a call from 2007. You call, heard a lady invite me to come out and visit with them. She would inform the pastor that I was there, that I was going to be there. I did go there, and we'll let you hear a clip as we go along, what we heard. But I, first of all, I want to introduce to you Larry Robertson. Take a listen. Let me say this, Caleb, why don't you get on your phone on the internet and see if you can hear it. Let's just stop there a minute. This is Larry Robertson, and he's at Vance Street Baptist. Now, you know the thing that really is beginning to make me extremely nervous with some of these individuals? That is that they are involved in, this is a holiness preacher, and he's over at Vance Street Baptist. And listen to what he's preaching in his own church, which is, uh, you know, that's how that, uh, phraseology is used, his own church. Fairview Baptist is not his church. You may have heard of Larry Robertson and you may say, well, that is his church. No, that's not his church. This is the Fairview Baptist Church and he has been unsuccessful in renaming that, as you saw on the sign just a moment ago. Let's listen to some of his sermon at Fairview Baptist. Now that was a little James Brown there. If you uh, if you were listening, he's going to get down on his knees and ah, I don't know what is going to happen there, but he had to put a little squeal in there. He was he was doing a little bit of the huffing over at Vance Street, and you know, some of the older preachers they have that style where they catch their breath every other word and they call that huffing. At least that's what I think they call it. I may be wrong, but if it's if I'm wrong, it's not biblical one way or the other. It's just something they've made up and people got used to it and it became famous. And so some of these older fellows are left. You'll hear a, a young guy every now and then, but here's what he's doing. He is trying to introduce Pentecostalism into this church. Take a listen. things I, I'd like for you to be able to notice, I hope you can see that. Let me just go to a, lo a full screen and give you a chance to be able to have a look. This is the new sanctuary, as they call it, and you can see that this is not at all filled. And as I said, I was there in 2007, and he wasn't filling up this building. And yet, they have taken the money that has been given in the last 10 years. I'm sure that Larry Robertson didn't come up with this money on his own. This is, uh, this is the result of him being over there. They've built, and really, doesn't this look ridiculous? I mean, why didn't you tear that down or, you know, move to another property, something? I mean, why do you have two, as they call it, sanctuaries? You've got two buildings. Um, I'm going to say that this building isn't, half again as big as this building as far as width is concerned. It's just uh, more up to date. And as you can see inside the assembly, they're not nearly filling up this group and he's trying his best to change this into a holiness church. Now, um, if you're watching tonight, this is in Gretna, Virginia. If you know Larry Robertson, if you know someone from Fairview Baptist, give them a ring and let them know that we're discussing them. And you might say, why do that? Because some of them are very concerned. Some called me in 2007 about this individual coming into their midst, a holiness, one in the Godhead holiness Pentecostal preacher. 
he came in and began to uh, insert himself into their, um, you know, their pastor died. And this is how it goes. Some interim individual, I think he was preaching in Chatham. He must have volunteered. Somebody volunteered. Somebody invited him. And now he's up there preaching Jesus only, trying to rebaptize individuals and, and convince them that if they haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus only, which this didn't even start until the 19, maybe 1906, something like that, 1901, actually 1901. No one ever heard of this until the Holy Ghost supposedly told somebody y'all doing this wrong in 1901 that you need to, it was a new revelation of Jesus only, baptizing in the name of Jesus only. Jesus is the only one in the Godhead. And so that's what he's down there preaching. He's built a new building, but he can't seem to accomplish what, let's just say, Mike Penn has accomplished. You all remember Mike Penn from over at, at uh, uh, Martinsville. This is still, this is their new sign. Now they put up a new sign associated with their new building, but it still says Fairview Baptist Church. They had Jonathan King, uh, excuse me, he calls himself Reverend Jonathan King for their revival, a couple of days revival, three days revival. And so Jonathan King is over there. He's from Danville. He's one of, uh, been on J.C. Richardson's program uh, up in Martinsville. Again, J.C. Richardson is an apostolic, one in the Godhead individual as well. School, ran a school of William, with William Bonner. And all of these individuals are not able to, you know, they're not able to follow through and accomplish what they're doing. I mean, here's Larry Robertson in his sermon. Let's listen to just a little bit of it. And my question was, in the beginning of our show, would you go? You know, you heard the young lady ask me if I would go. Would, would I visit churches? Would I be willing to come over and visit the church where she is and maybe help them out with um, some understanding? The people that I talked to this past week, they are in great need of some encouragement and in help in regard to doctrine. As I said, Larry Robertson is trying to preach, teach everybody that Pentecostalism is the way to go. Let's listen to this, this uh, uh, video one more time. That's all I've got. She basically said in that clip, she wanted to know, did I visit churches? And she invited me to come over and visit with them. And the reason why is what's being stated in this video. Take a listen. Now, what he's depending on is what all these pre preachers depend on, and that's a loudmouth woman to be somewhere in the assembly, yes, sir, screaming out, yes, sir. You think people don't know you're back there? She's up in the choir area screaming out, yes, sir, yes, sir, what? Yes, sir, we can have another Pentecost. Now, you think if you scream loud enough, you're going to get the Holy Spirit to come down? That's, you know, you're not going to get another Pentecost. They're trying to work this out, but they just can't seem to get it done. And as I said, he can't even get the name change from Baptist to uh, what he is today. And so, you know, that's, a, that's an issue that he's, he's still dealing with. Mike Penn over in Martinsville, he did get Baptist out of their church name, and he's turning into a Pentecostal. But, you know, Mike Penn's having the same problem that Larry Robertson's have. R Larry Robertson has moved himself up to a bishop in the holiness movement. Michael Penn's still... He's not moving into the Pentecostal realm to the point where he's going to call himself a bishop yet. I don't know if that's coming, but he calls himself a doctor. But see, here's the thing he can't get done. He can't get doctor. He really can't get himself a doctor's degree because he has been um, shortchanged, let's put it that way, by Teamwork International and the other school that he went to supposedly trying to get a Bachelor of Arts in order to prop up his doctor's degree. And so those are things that we found out. How did we find out? How did we find these things out, folks? The way we found them out is by going through that litany of should we stay or should we go? And at the end of it, we made the decision that we should go. That we should go to these churches. We should, if people are asking us to talk, asking us to meet with them, asking, them to, asking us to ask questions, and uh, generally 
help them with the doctrine that they're not understanding anymore? Now, one of the things that you might say, well, Johnny, well, how, how far will you help them? We'll help them all the way back to the New Testament if they will let us. Because you see, just helping Fairview Baptists get rid of a Pentecostal holiness, oneness, apostolic gentleman isn't getting you all the way back to the Bible if you're still wearing the name of a church that's not in the Bible. And so it's, this is a good time. And folks, what I'm saying tonight is it is a great time for us to realize what's taking place in the world around us. And it's a great time for members of the Church of Christ to realize people are in a state of flux. They are in a state of a, an extreme state of change. Now, when are we going to start paying attention and participating? We have so many people in the Church of Christ, so many preachers that are so timid and scared and afraid and worried about maybe causing some kind of conflict and, and, and an uproar. What, what's wrong with an uproar? What's wrong with conflict? What's wrong with people being moved from their comfort zone and getting their Bible out? Do you not realize from the state of politics, Caleb, look in there and, and uh, there's a stack of about 20 DVDs in that black, black thing there on the, against the wall. And what, is there anything, I mean, when you think about the state of affairs in regard to our, uh, our politics, do you not see that we're, our world is changing? It's changing at a fast rate. And guess what? Religious, religion is too. I mean, when you drive by and see this, what do you think? <laughs> you know, a lot of people would think, well, they probably got traditional people over here in the one building. They got contemporary people over here in the other building. What does that mean? Traditional means you're doing it like they did 50 years ago. And then uh, contemporary means you've got uh, James Brown over here screaming and yelling and women yelling their head off trying to get the Holy Ghost to come down. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost is not going to get within 100 miles of that place because of the screaming women. Because the Holy Ghost has said to let them be silent. All that yelling and carrying on and, you know, it's kind of almost like you're at a prize fight and you're or a race, uh, at a horse race and your horse is not doing do any, any good. You know, it kind of, it, I've been to a horse race before and, you know, folks, horses don't speak English. And all that carrying on that people do in the stands is not helping that horse. It's not changing his speed. And neither is all that yelling helping the Holy Ghost get any closer to you. Nor is him screaming like James Brown getting any closer. Now, he is putting on a show. I mean to tell you, he's got that movement going on down there, and he's, he is putting on a show. There's no doubt about it. Here's what I'm proposing. Now, I have about 20 to 25 DVDs right here. These are DVDs of a debate that I had with a oneness in the Godhead Pentecostal fellow who flew all the way in here from California. Now, what was going on in his mind is he was watching us on the Internet and he was noticing that no one in the oneness in the Pente oneness Pentecostal, that would be Benny Dodson over in uh, Martinsville. For some of you folks in Martinsville are watching, that would be Lawrence Campbell. That would be Lorenzo Hall. That would be Bishop Kellum. That would be Early Dillard. That would be, you know, several of these kinds of preachers, J.C. Richardson. All of these oneness in the Pentecostal apostolic folk could not answer us. And so this guy in California says, Tis, tis, this is so terrible. I need, to, I need to fly into Martinsville. I need to fly over there into the North Carolina, uh, Virginia area and, and help my brethren out. So he flies in, and this is a free DVD, 20, 20, maybe 25 of them. I don't remember how many. And we'll keep them going, keep them coming to people who are at Gretna Fairview Baptist. If you want one of these DVDs, they're yours for free. What is it? Why are we giving it to you? It's ammunition. It is, will enable you to answer this one in the Godhead false doctrine. It will help you to get that stuff shut down. You know, when I first moved to Martinsville, one of the number one calls that I would get would be from Baptists who were being pushed around by one in the Godhead preachers in Martinsville, like the ones I just said, Early Dillard, Bishop Kellum, he's, he has passed now, Lorenzo Hall, um, and a few of the others, I, I'm not for sure who all is involved in this anymore. I think Alan Preston is still in this. And none of these guys can defend their position as, as to whether it's biblical or not. They're very uh, timid. They're li like some of the gospel preachers that I know. They're afraid to take the, the teaching that they have out into the marketplace and stand up for the truth. And so we're making these available. And you might say, well, what if no one's from Gretna is watching? I'm going back to Gretna. I know where several of the members live. I'm going to hand them to them personally because I know that several of them are very upset. 
They're not happy with oneness in the Godhead. They're not happy with these folk claiming they got something. One, a couple of individuals told me she, that they didn't know what they think they got up there hooping and hollering and falling around and making all that noise, but it sure isn't salvation. And I agree. Somebody needs some help. And so we're going to make these available. This will be our, Mike and I went down there yesterday. We had a very nice visit. We were able to see the uh, uh, progress. That's what he would call it, progress. You got two buildings. And, you know, ultimately what could end up happening is the individuals who want to remain what they used to be will be in the red brick building. And the few individuals that Larry Robertson has got over on his side will be in the big new building. And that's going to be interesting to see. And we're going to press that. Why? Because it is important. Why is it important? Let, let me let you watch another clip. This is another situation that happened as a result of us going. Should I stay or should I go? Individuals call us and ask us to participate, and we do. And what happens? We begin to question folks' doctrine, and the members begin to say, Now look, you pastors said y'all had the truth, and you pastors talk how strong you are, and, and we're on the day of Pentecost, we got the Holy Ghost, and we're not afraid of anybody, and we need to be radical. That's what he was saying over at Vance Street, Larry Robertson. And I've already uh, asked Larry Robertson to come on a television program. You know what his answer was? We'll see. That was 10 years ago. He is scared to death to bring this doctrine out into the open and array it in front of the community and have the Bible opened up to examine it. That's just all there is to it. And why is he scared? Here's why. Here's one of J.C. Richardson's students. His name is Charles Goad. And I want you to watch what he tried to do on one of our live programs where we had him on for our discussion. Let me take that, uh, I'm going to take this visual down off of here so you can actually see this gentleman's face. What's going on here? We'll move this over a little bit and we'll play that again so you can see it. scripture because it's not in there and nothing happened and I apologize uh, uh, Marshall for I apologize for uh, anything that you feel that you had to go through with him that I didn't tell you would happen I now here, here's an amazing fact for you this guy Charles is actually crippled himself now you might somebody's gonna be uh, uh, squinching up about right now and and they're going to be saying, did he just say cripple? I don't know what else to say. The man has a problem with his ankle. He has a very bad limp. He is J.C. Richardson's student. J.C. Richardson has healing power through him from God, according to him. Can't remember the name of his apostolic church over in Martinsville. It's, there, it's on Church Street, right off of Fayette Street, right at the corner of Church in Fayette. And I say that to maybe make me think that I might remember it. Nevertheless, he can't even heal him. Now, if J.C. Richardson can't heal this guy, why does this one think that he can heal the other man who also has problems with his legs and has been crippled for many years? I did not know the other man. He was recommended by a friend of mine that he certainly would be willing to take a chance he claims that he is a believer in Jesus Christ. I don't, he's not a member or associated with me in any way. He likely believes Charles Goad a whole lot more than he believes me. And Charles Goad said, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. I didn't see a thing. I'm, that's why I'm saying, isn't it a shame 
I mean, you think about the false hope that is take that is being uh, put out there. You know, I, a lot of people when we have election, they get very agitated and aggravated about the politicians, and they say these politicians make all kinds of promises and then nothing happens. Well, what about the preachers? Why are you not aggravated and agitated when someone says, ask the question, will you stay or will you go? Will you stay in your little building and your little circle and your little comfort zone or will you go out into the masses and expose these folk for what they are? They're destroying our nation, really, because when you see other individuals watching these people and nothing happens, but then they all just, you know, when, when uh, Charles Goad does something like that at a, at a healing service at their place, they lay hands on somebody and nothing happens, they go crazy. They go crazy that nothing happened. They just go crazy. I mean, all you have to do is just get up and start calling the Holy Ghost and they go crazy. But see, regular thinking people, they know they had a healing service over there and they know that people came out and they were not healed. And so that's a very good reason that we should be involved. Now listen to, listen to his explanation. Now notice this. He starts talking about feeling the Holy Ghost. You know what, folks? This Holy Ghost business is the easiest doctrine that I have found so far. When I discuss with Baptists, I have to get into the Scripture and I have to spend some time undoing their false doctrine because the, the things that they say, they have found some of their words in the Scripture and they misuse them and I have to unentangle it. But see, with the Pentecostals, their stuff's not even in the Bible. I mean, it's just so very simple. All you have to do is just start asking them to show something. And, you know, I mean, if they just say, well, we can't show it, why can't you? Because you don't believe, so my belief, unbelief is stronger than your belief. Well, I guess that's it. See how easy that is? I mean, that's ridiculous. Would you, how would you like to have that position? Listen to how he explains himself. We were speaking off camera, and we were talking about, I could not explain the anointing to John Robinson. And it's the thing, amen, that is so great and so powerful in you that you feel it. And it goes out of you. And when you're preaching the gospel, you feel it and you know it's there. And it brings that beautiful joy. And not only that, it has a tendency, the Bible says, it destroys the joy. And it seems to drive the word home and go. And there's none of that in the Bible. Now, first of all, he said, you can, I can't explain it. Okay, shut up. That would be shut up. You can't explain it. But I'm still going to explain it. Well, man, you said you couldn't explain it. Well, let me go ahead and explain the unexplainable. When you have somebody that's going to explain the unexplainable, you know that you have a person who's mixed up. You don't start out by saying, I can't explain it, and then start explaining it, and said, it takes the yoke away. It drives home the word. Where does it say that? Where is the information that, number one, you can't explain that actually says all of that? It's not in there. And he says that you can feel it. Well, let's just examine this. I, I love this, as I say. And, and again, it really bothers me that members of the Church of Christ, just, I might just forget the preachers. You folk in the pew, aren't you getting tired of being losers? Aren't you getting tired of the dwindling numbers? Get up, get out, and mix and mingle with these individuals. Do I stay or do I go? Are you not going to go out into the marketplace and the masses and talk to these people? What do you have to lose? You have everything to lose if you stay. If you stay in the pew, stay put, stay in your four walls, you're going to die too. And these folk around you are going to multiply. Ignorance is going to multiply when knowledge is not being dispensed. That always happens. As knowledge is being kept inside, ignorance just goes crazy. And crazy is the word here. Now, let's say, look how easy this is. I'm just ashamed, really, of my own brethren for how, uh, when you get down to how easy Pentecostalism is. He said, you just feel it. Well, let's look at the feel verses. You might say, okay, man, I thought this, was, this lesson was going to be over at nine. And he's talking about, let's look at the field verses. We'll be here all night. Really? Is that what you think? Let's look at the field verses. We'll be through with them in three minutes. Acts 17, 27, that they should seek the Lord and happily they, happily they may feel after Him and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. Now, this is a statement that Paul is... is uh, bringing up from their own teaching that they didn't know about the true God. And Paul is telling him he's not far from you that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him. Now, that didn't say you were going to feel him. That is basically the idea of you searching, you reaching to find him. Matthew 7, 7, seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. This is not talking about you feeling Jesus. 
This is not a verse that says you're going to feel anything. This is a verse for you trying to search. You know, you're out here and you're trying to feel around and find something, seeking for something. That's what that verse is talking about. Look at Ephesians 4, 19. Who, be past feel, who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. This is a passage about the Gentiles who are very wicked. And he said they're past feeling and have given themselves over into lasciviousness. They're to the point where you can't reach them. This is not talking about you feeling the Holy Ghost. You will not find a passage where the Bible talks about feeling the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 4.15 For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but when all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. This is talking about Jesus being a great high priest who knows how we feel. This is not us feeling Jesus. This is not us feeling the Holy Ghost. This is about the fact that Jesus knows what we're going through. Still searching? You're going to still be searching. Here's the last two verses. This is it. This is all of the verses on feel, feeling, felt. I'm looking at all the possibilities here. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt her body that she was healed of that plague. She could tell that she wasn't bleeding anymore. She didn't feel the Holy Ghost. This woman felt that she was not bleeding anymore, that this plague was not in her body anymore. Acts 28 verse 5, And he shook off the beast in the fire and felt no harm. That's when you've been bitten by a snake and you have the power that was available in the first century. You could shake off a snake and not even feel the bite. Let's see you do that. Now I'd like to see some of that feeling. And that is explainable. I mean, you can explain that, can't you? You ever see anybody be bitten and just shake the... the uh, I've seen some people be stung by a, a wasp or something like that and just shake it off. I've never seen anybody bitten. I've never seen anybody that's willing to try to be bit. We saw a bunch of these snake handlers on uh, the History Channel or something like that in the last couple of years, and the, the star is dead. You know why? Snake bit him, and he's dead. He felt it. Paul did not feel it. There's your verses. Now, is it any wonder that uh, Charles Goad couldn't explain that while ago? He started talking about he could feel it. Nobody in the New Testament talks about feeling the Holy Ghost. Not one single time. There's your verses. One, two, three, four, five. Wasn't that simple? One, two, three, four, five. And I'm a member of the Church of Christ, and I'm scared to go out and have a discussion with somebody who claims they feel the Holy Ghost. Well, who else in the New Testament felt it? Who, who else in the New Testament talked about how it felt? I mean, when we look in the New Testament, we see demonstrations that if you didn't even have any power from the Holy Ghost, you could look at somebody else and you could see the demonstration of them having the Holy Ghost. It wasn't a secret that, oh, how do you feel? Well, I can't explain it, but it's making me jump up and down and scream and holler. Who did that in the New Testament? Uh, lunatics. Uh, just look in your Bible, Mark 9, Luke 9. Lunatics. Those individuals who were rolling around, foaming at the mouth, and, and, and that's what it actually says. That's the way they were behaving. They were possessed with a demonic spirit, lunatics. And here people are trying to act like that today and put Jesus' name on it, James Brown, and you got trying to put Jesus' name on it. See, that's why we're saying this is so important. Acts 17, 17. Should I stay or should I go? Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews, with the devout persons in the marketplace daily with them that met with him. Paul said, you should go. You should go out into the marketplace. You should go out into the highways and the byways. You should be on the housetop, any place that you can be. You should have radio programs. You should have television programs. You could have all kinds of media. I mean, we're on the Internet right now on YouTube for free. It's not costing us anything. What is wrong with our world? What is wrong with the brotherhood in the church of Christ when the YouTube is free? And have you seen some of the stupid stuff that's on YouTube? People arguing with each other, not anybody discussing about what's going on with denominationalism. Turn your sights to the enemy. What is the enemy? The enemy is a seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Where, where does that come from, Johnny? Well, let's see if we can trace that down because that sounds very harsh and destructive and it probably will drive people off. Well, it might drop, drive some demonic, uh, some uh, doctrines of devils off and wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't that be a good thing to do? Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, if you just notice this in 1 Timothy chapter 4, you'll find that very thing. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What is a doctrine of devil? 
Doctrines of devils is the same thing as teaching doctrine, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Commandments of men and doctrines of devils are the same thing. They didn't come from God. So what's the other possibility? James Brown. You got James Brown up in the podium. James Brown up in the, in the middle of the, uh, of the, of the uh, orchestra. Where'd the orchestra come from? James Brown? Don't you realize that James Brown's making a lot of money with that? You see these entertainers making a lot of money with that? Well, so what, what, how did that, the pastors are watching them. They're not watching Jesus. This is not the way Jesus behaved. And so who's going to tell them? Well, let's just, let's look how things went when Paul went into the marketplace. Now, don't think necessarily you're not going to have any, any opposition. And this may be why some of the preachers don't like to go. And it may be why they're given, they give us a hard time. We get a hard time. I'm telling you, preachers, denominational preachers, uh, and preachers in the church of Christ give us a hard time. And here may be why. When Paul went out into the marketplace, when he was going to the masses, look what happened. But Elymas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood us, withstood them seeking to turn the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, uh, Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and look what he says. O full of all subtlety and mischief, thou child of the devil. I told you doctrines of devils is what men teach. Child of the devil. What was he doing? Trying to keep the, the deputy from seeing the faith. So you're a child of the devil if you try to keep somebody from seeing the faith. That's right. Now, why is it again that we're not going? Should I stay or should I go? We're not going because we don't want to offend somebody. You don't want to offend the children of the devil. You're, you're afraid of the children of the devil. You, you think that the children of the devil are going to be loster than they are now? Yeah, I, I said loster. Children of the devil are going to be loster than they are right now. I have actually heard people tell me that. They say, Johnny, y'all are driving them away. Driving them away? What? You're already away. How can I drive you away? Way? How can I make you loster? You're lost. You're away. I didn't do it. You're a children of the devil as a result of having imbibed the devil's doctrine. And Paul is saying it right here. You're a child of the devil if you reject the faith, the truth. Look, what, what do you reject? The right ways of the Lord. Listen, I'm teaching the right ways of the Lord. There is no Holy Ghost feeling in the right ways of the Lord. Throw it out. There is no James Brown in the pulpit. Throw it out. All of that comes from the children of the devil. Well, Johnny, you shouldn't say that. Why? Paul did. He said doctrines of devils, seducing spirit, and then he called a person who was involved in that kind of thing a child of the devil. And he said, you're an enemy of righteous, all righteousness will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Well, I just want to leave those people alone. You know, kind of live and let live. You want to leave people alone who are perverting the right ways of the Lord? Perverting. You like that word pervert? How about a per pervert in a bathroom? How did we get to that point? We got to that point by all of us sitting in our pews doing nothing, saying nothing. Now we're all complaining about the state of affairs. How did we get here? Truth is basically gone. We're in a time of famine of the truth. No one wants to speak up. I'm going to speak up. Well, is it, is it difficult? Yes, it's difficult. Look at this. You've got a guy who is a sorcerer who, who is trying to take you on. That's difficult. These guys are, when you talk about sorcerer, have you ever heard of a vagabond? Is that a good word? Vagabond. Acts chapter 19, that's what the Holy Spirit calls individuals. Let's look at Acts 19:13. The Holy Spirit calls individuals that were trying to use the doctrine that Paul was using in an improper way. Look at this. Then certain of the vagabond Jews. What is a vagabond? Let's look at this word. A vagabond Jew, it comes from this Greek word and it means to come all around, to stroll, um, vacillate, veer, fetch, accompass, vagabond, wandering about. Man, that sounds like Larry. Larry was wandering about, just looking. Larry who? Larry Robertson. That's who we're talking about here. We're talking about these oneness Pentecostal preachers who are wandering around looking for a church to take over, moving all these people out of their old home church. Now, listen, I'm not for their home church either, but I do feel sorry for you folk because, as I say, I actually study with Baptists and Pentecostals, and when it comes down to the people who used to know the Bible better, the Baptists knew the Bible a lot better than the Pentecostals. Pentecostals are all about feeling. And see, I don't even know feeling's not in the Bible. So it's a bit difficult when you start working with some of these individuals. Yes, Sharon, what does the Bible say? Yes, Johnny. I'm glad you pointed out that the reason we got here is by lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge in the Word. You showed a Mr. Goad, and he didn't give us any scripture 
for why he believed he had the Holy Spirit in him, but he was talking about how he felt. And if you take today in our society, now you can feel that you're a woman if you're biologically a man, and that's being accepted. Okay. It only makes me wonder, since you accept someone who claims to have the Holy Spirit by feeling, and now we're starting to accept people that are they're anatomically a different sex, what are we going to accept next based on someone else's feelings rather than any knowledge? Well, you know what I have been trying to get brethren to do? And by the way, for the callers, this is a gentleman that attends in Danville, and uh, we were together last Sunday. I've been trying to get brethren, and I mentioned this, by the way, in the um, foyer as we were leaving. Uh, I, I was talking to the folk from uh, Alta Vista, and I asked them to go to the library and see if you can find a book that, and the guy's name just slipped my mind. Um, he is the co-writer. Y'all can look this up on your phone if you would. He is the co-writer with Kinsey, Alfred Kinsey, on his book, Male Sexuality in, uh, Human Sexuality in the Male. And um, his name is just like right on the tip of my tongue. He actually wrote a book about Pomeroy. He wrote a book about sex with farm animals. And it's in the public library. And so what we're actually having going on is we're having the most base element of our society that used to be kept down. Nobody knows this is in the library, and it's probably the case that you'd have a fine, hard time yourself. You know, I'm saying, caller, you would have a hard time getting that, but some other person who's not associated with us might be able to. That's why I asked him to go to Alta Vista. Pomeroy co-wrote the book. He, he co-researched with Alfred Kinsey um, this, this book on uh, human sexuality in the male, and then later, that's 1948, then later human sexuality in the females. And he actually says that this is a very useful practice. That's how he felt. See where we are? I agree with you 100%. When you, stop, when you start feeling like you, that's your, that is your authority, then you can start feeling you're a woman tomorrow when you're really a man. All right, appreciate the call. Thank you. All right. You see, folks, that's exactly what we're talking about. And use your head. I mean, isn't that exactly what we're talking about? If he can feel he has the Holy Ghost and get away with it, if... Uh, Larry Robertson feels like he's James Brown and starts, I mean, seriously, y'all. I mean, how carried away do you have to get to start acting like you're James Brown and doing a slide? There was one preacher, he's passed now in, in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Rocky Mount, Virginia. He used to do this slide and he'd squall and scream and hold his finger up. And he, you know, these guys just get, they get the feeling that they're some magical performer or something. And is it a far stretch for somebody else to feel that farm animals are actually within their sexual range? Well, you think that's way out? You think that's not coming? Go to your library. I, we have actually called every library in Henry County and all the way up to Roanoke, and they all claim that they have the book. It's listed. I don't know if somebody's stolen it. We tried to go in and get a book so we could show it. And when we would get there, they wouldn't allow us to see it. So, and now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Who? The sorcerer. This is like a vagabond. This wanderer looking for some way to pervert the truth. The hand of the Lord shall be upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. You see how, how strong Paul felt about this? In Acts 19 with those vagabond Jews, they ended up burning all of the books associated with their false doctrine. That's how serious they are. And we've got these squeamish individuals that are associated with the Church of Christ. They're so scared to even say a denominational person's name. Can I tell you denominational people talk trash about you? And they talk trash about each other. There was Larry Robertson. Larry Robertson is trying his best to get rid of Baptist doctrine and replace it with Pentecostal doctrine. He is opposed to that. He says it is actually false doctrine to say that there is anything but Jesus in the Godhead. Now, as I say, we have debated that. Now, notice this. This is Benny Dodson. He's one of these Pentecostal guys from Calvary Hill, United Pentecostal Church. And you just listen to what these individuals say. If you think that it's okay just to leave them alone, listen to what was written in the newspaper. This is what Benny Dodson said about me in the newspaper. He said, in the presence of my wife, son. Now, when he says son, we're not talking about some toddler. This was a big old boy. My son and our visiting evangelist, he called our evangelist a liar, a coward, and a false prophet. So? So what? He is a liar. 
And, and Larry Robertson says that all Baptists are liars, and so does Benny Dodson. Ba Benny Dodson says if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus only, you're a liar, you are a false prophet, and I would su suppose if, he, if you wouldn't discuss with him in one of those churches, he'd probably say, you're a coward. Now he said, I understand that later, he, Johnny, said on his TV program that I struck him. I did not strike him. But at that point, I did tighten his shirt collar and showed him to his vehicle. Oh, now just picture this. I'm saying to their preacher, now what it really was, he wanted to co-write a book with me. He wanted us to publish the debate. And I said, I don't want to be involved in any kind of money-making affair with you whatsoever. I said, we'll do this on television. You do what you want to do with your DVD or whatever. And I'm not asking you to participate with me in any way. I will do what we do. And I said, I don't want to help a, a liar or a coward or a false prophet. If I said that, I don't even know if I said all that. I'm sure I said that. I'm positive I said he was a liar. And teaching one in the Godhead and the Pentecostal church that just started in 1901 is the true church. And so at this point, he straightened my shirt collar. What does that mean? Well, whatever it means, he says, I was not proud of that encounter. And I repented of it before our church. But at the same time, I'm sure... I'm not sure I would handle it any different if it were to happen again. How can you say you repent of something and turn around and say, I probably would do the same thing again? Was that shirt, tighten my shirt collar? He tried to throw me down. He was in the process of slinging me down in his yard. Yeah, that's right. I was just basically talking to the false teacher that he had brought in from California to have a discussion. And I said that the guy was a liar and he's a false prophet and didn't want to be involved in his money-making schemes. And at that point, he just got physical. That's all it is, tighten my shirt collar. What is that a euphemism for? Well, here he is. Look at him right there. You can see him off to the side right there. Let's see if I can, if I can point him out. He's behind Kip and I'm having a hard time there. Guy in the purple shirt. He's standing there. He's up there. Now, he's opposing homosexuals at Chick-fil-A. And watch this. Now, I want you to notice because this is, uh, let me just go to another clip. This is uh, uh, one of my friends at the time was at his house talking to him about coming out to our tent and having a discussion. Notice how this turned out. We teach different. We and why do you not? Why is it that he's one way and we're another? Because he's lying. The stuff that they say happens. I've been in his assembly. They were in there one day when we were in there, screaming and hollering and yelling. It sounded like it sounded like the animal pen at a circus. I'm talking about the back part where they got all the animals. You know, you got. Have, have you ever heard all of these animals together like a a, a um, elephant? is blowing and he's making his sound and um, a peacock is making their sound. It is just, I'm saying it was like a zoo. And they were trying to get this woman who really didn't want to be bothered with this. She had two hearing aids and they were trying to scream it out of her, I guess, kind of like Larry Robertson over here at Fairview Baptist, you know, screaming to get the Holy Ghost to come on the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost again. They were screaming and hollering and you could not hear anything in there. Now, He's asking us why we're different. Well, the question is, why are y'all doing all that? And that woman ended up leaving that church. She started attending with us and telling us all the stuff. They took her to some convention trying to get, I think maybe the Holy Ghost likes Kansas a little bit better than, Mar than Martinsville, Virginia. They took her to Topeka, Kansas, or wherever their headquarters was. I'm pretty sure it was Kansas. And they were hoping that she would get healed in Kansas. You know, I never really knew that the Holy Spirit was geographical like that. 
But I guess, you know, uh, I'm, that's kind of like feeling for the Holy Ghost. You know, having the Holy Ghost and you feel it and you can't ex explain it. Maybe they can explain to us why the Holy Ghost doesn't work in Martinsville. So the, the guy from California did the same thing. He said, I've got friends that sent me pictures from the Philippines and all this stuff is happening. I'm like, I thought some of this was going to happen in, in Reedsville. I mean, you came here claiming that you were going to do something here. It's always somewhere else. And that's why we're different. Well, let's just move along here. I want to show you what ended up happening. Another better only the first. But when she heard Jesus was in Christ, she said in her heart, if I can trust him as God know of, that was for her. It wasn't to show you and I or the world. She had spent all she was none the better only the first. God every miracle was like John or I wonder some I can't hear Benny, Benny Dotson. Dotson. And it's Stubblefield? Yeah. Brant Stubblefield. Brant? Yeah. Are you local or are you no, saying advantage to travel? I, all I, I used to have a, a congregation full time I preached, but now I just go place to place over the body. Excuse me. Thank you. Well, you sit down and read the scripture, and I'll uh, you know, give some thoughts of what I want to present, but we'll just have the Bible there and feel like we're going there. Okay, sounds good. All right, man. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Now, did, was there any harm in that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all around. Now, listen to what Benny Dodson says about himself and that visit. Like the apostles got it in no. the, the Acts of the Apostles? No. Did you have When uh, the church was born on the day of Pentecost and you missed the birthday? Did you have uh, tongues of fire? Did I have tongues of yeah. fire? Yeah, it lit my no, soul no, no, up. Come on now. Yes. Tongues oh, as a it, fire. It fired me up. No. Is sure that what did. it was in the first century? Well, sure, it fired them up. No, I'm saying in the book of Acts it says there was cloven tongues as a fire on each of their heads. Did you have that? Did, did you? You did say as of fire, no, didn't you? That's right. It you don't really fly. believe it was fire burning them, do you? What do you think it was? I think it was the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. So you're saying that there was no manifestation that people could have seen? They could have been, heads? but God don't manifest Himself the same way all the time, does He, Johnny? No, but I'm saying you He manifests ones. Himself. As a lamb, as a lion, as a burning bush, he manifests himself many different That's ways. True. That's true. But he is God manifest oh, in the flesh. Yeah. On the day of Pentecost, I think that it would be very surprising for people to hear you say that that wasn't literally something people could see that was on top of their heads, like well, as a I wouldn't deny it was. Okay, did you oh, receive not. that? No, I received the Holy Ghost and spake oh, with other tongues okay. as the Spirit of Jesus God gave Christ me Christ is the same today, yesterday, forever, and you but didn't receive that? he don't do that? the same thing all the time, does he? Okay, that, does that's Does he raise my everybody point. from the dead? That's my no, point. we don't. Okay, so then I don't have to but have tongues. But can he raise folks from the dead? I don't have to have tongues and all that today, is that right? You don't have to. Yes, you do have to. Well, that, Does he raise everybody from the dead? That's my no, point. we don't. Okay, so then I don't have to but have tongues. But can he raise folks from the dead? I don't have to have tongues and all that today, is that right? You don't have to. Yes, you do have to. Well, if you're going to be born again. Why do you not have to have the tongue, the uh, cloven tongues of fire as a fire? And I don't have to have because the... Because that's nothing to do with salvation. The Spirit is what has to do with okay. salvation. You must be good. born again of okay. the water right. so, and of the Spirit. So the tongues is for today, the speaking in tongues, but the tongues of fire, that's not appropriate. Uh, that's not I don't necessary. think it's necessary, no. What's the difference today in you coming up to me with a camera and when I came to your house last time, or one of the guys that works with me came to your house? What is the difference? Yep. He was insulting and... In now see, this guy's a liar too. You see that? I mean, did you see what he just did? He, everybody was, okay, thank you, yeah, okay, thank you very much, thank you very much, come again, thank you. Did you not remember? Did you see that? He was insulting. And did you hear what he just said? He said to everybody who's listening tonight, Benny Dodson said, you have to have tongues. It's a part of salvation. So all of you folk out there who don't have tongues, supposedly like, like them uttering this jibber jabber, then you don't have salvation. See how this goes? Now, should we stay or should we go? Should we go out and confront that? You see how easy that was? This was ridiculously easy. He contradicted himself. He said that he was insulted by the other visit when he wasn't. He actually almost broke our camera when he was talking to the, when he actually reached out and grabbed the ca cameraman's camera. But as far as the discussion was concerned, it was all thank yous around when they got ready to leave. And I've been back to his house since then, been invited in, and he didn't want to be involved with the camera, but he walked right up to the camera in this particular instance. So, folks, this is very easy to demonstrate. And the camera helps it, as a matter of fact. 
When we have these guys on television, we have cameras. They're not shying away from the cameras then, and it doesn't get any better. Take a listen to this. This is how Pentecostals end up being when you get them on the set, and this is why they don't come. California with the power of the Holy Ghost and I'm supposed to help him prove his point? That's pathetic. I mean, that's just simply ridiculous. I mean, are you hearing this? This ought to make everybody who is a member of the Church of Christ want to just jump out of your pew and head out to the marketplace and start uh, handling Pentecostals. This is the one in the Godhead, the most rabid Pentecostal apostolic group of all. They claim that Jesus only, if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus only, and he flew in here of his own uh, he, he paid his own price, to, uh, his own airfare to come down here and be on television. We paid for the television time. And then people start saying, Johnny, why didn't you let him use your computer? Why does he need to use my computer? He has the Holy Ghost. I mean, he could have struck me blind like Paul did. I'm perverting the true ways according to him. Why didn't he strike me blind? Why didn't something happen like Acts chapter 19? I mean, seriously? You have the community calling in and begging us to help the poor Pentecostals to make their point. You see, folks, should we stay or should we go? We should be out there helping them, and that's exactly why I'm trying to help these individuals at Fairview Baptist get rid of Larry Robertson. They called us in 2007, and now it's simply ridiculous how far this has, has gone in 2016. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, In my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your face should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You don't ever get a demonstration from any of these people. You get people calling in and begging us to let them use our computer so they can make their point. That's just, what a demonstration that was. That was one of the best demonstrations in the entire discussion. And so basically, here is a, a, another instance of individuals that are in our area. Look at this individual. Now this gentleman is no longer associated with us and he still tries to use our name. And I want you to notice what he was doing back in um, in earlier times as a Pentecostal. You can take me to the bank on this. When Jesus Christ was at the whipping post, he took 39 strikes. And medical doctors, scientists... Now I can just shorten this for you. This guy never did walk. He claimed that he walked and he claimed that he was an apostle and that, that he was a healer. Now, just because he guessed that he was having a boy, he's a prophet. Simple, simple, simple. He ended up leaving that faith. Folks, tonight, we're simply telling you that it is time to ask yourself the question, you gonna stay or are you gonna go? You gonna stay in your pew? If you're a person who's a member of the Church of Christ, you need to get up out of that pew and get started. Get out into the masses in the marketplace and start defeating this. People started out feeling they had the Holy Ghost, now they feel like they're a man when they're really a woman. What's next? Well, we told you what's next. Appreciate you for watching tonight. You can see our cell phone numbers there. That's Micah's cell phone number, Caleb's cell phone number, my cell phone number. I'm not going to repeat them. You can read them. We're going to get out of the way and let James O'Field get on with the word from the Lord. We appreciate you for being with us. Always ask for What does the Bible say? Good night. God bless you. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Not that Johnny. Here's Johnny. Definitely not that Johnny. Johnny Robertson is back. Sunday nights at 9 on WGSR TV 47. What? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael.